When going into battle, always make sure you have a full clip or magazine in your weapon. You don't want to face the enemy and run out of rounds after two shots. Always check and reload your weapon from a safe position. When firing your weapon, it can become unstable when not supported. To improve accuracy and reduce recoil, rest your weapon on windowsills, walls, and other objects. Your weapon is braced if you see this icon appear on the lower right corner of your screen. Most weapons have an alternate mode which can be switched to by pressing the number 6 key. Use this for weapons like the Thompson for single shot fire and with the sniper rifles to switch from the scope to iron sights. When shooting at a moving target at long range, aim in front of your target. This is called leading. How much you lead depends on the range and the speed of the target. Aim for the target's center mass to maximize your chance of hitting him. To properly adjust for a target at long range, you can adjust for bullet drop or the range on most weapons by moving your mouse wheel up and down. Melee fighting is essential to surviving a fight when you run into an enemy soldier up close or you run out of ammo. Many weapons have the option to unlock a bayonet that can kill instantly. The stock of your weapon will need two hits when not aimed for the head. You can even bash someone's head in with the binoculars. The longer you hold the melee button before you strike, the stronger the attack will be. The Japanese Type 97 and 99 sniper scopes can look confusing when using them for the first time. Each horizontal gradient on the vertical line represents 100 meter intervals with 0 meters at the top. Each line down from the top represents a 100 meter adjustment. The point where the vertical and horizontal lines meet is adjusted for 300 meters. The Browning Automatic Rifle or BAR can be a difficult weapon to master. Use small bursts of fire for better control. This also applies to the German MKB-42. Unlock the BAR's undergrip for increased accuracy and reduced recoil. Firing from the hip can be a very effective way to survive a close quarters fight when you don't have enough time to aim with your iron sights. Use small bursts of fire from the machine gun to suppress the enemy. Long, sustained firing is less accurate and will cause your barrel to overheat. The Browning M1919, the MG34, the Japanese Type 96 and Type 99 have the option to change out the hot barrel using the number 6 key. The MG34 and BAR have a single fire mode selected with the middle mouse button, useful for keeping your ammunition usage low. When using a stationary machine gun, you can press the C key and you will take cover, but are still able to shoot the machine gun. Very handy when you are being shot at by enemies getting close to your position. When using a bolt action rifle, enable manual bolting in the options menu. This way, if you happen to encounter an enemy ready to take you on in a melee fight, you don't automatically start to put a new round in your chamber, and you can counter quickly with a melee attack. When using the flamethrower, you don't have to be right in front of your target. You can fire the stream from side to side to get a good effect without being in your enemy's view. Don't forget the flamethrower has a very long reach. When using the Japanese Type 89 knee mortar, be sure that nothing is blocking your line of fire above or you might injure your teammates or even worse, yourself. Learn to cook your grenades when you know an enemy is nearby. Pull the pin, wait two seconds and throw. By correctly timing your grenade throw, the enemy has no chance of escaping the blast. The length of time you cook the grenade depends on how far the enemy is from your position. You can also throw grenades in an underhand motion for a short distance. Very effective when thrown over a wall or through a window.
You don't have to stand directly in front of a doorway or window to make a grenade go inside. You can throw from the left or right side of a wall or window. Throwing it against a wall will make it bounce right in. Very effective if there are enemies waiting around a corner. When playing on the Japanese team and the enemy is about to overrun your position, place booby traps before retreating. You can only place two booby traps. <laughs> to do this, select your grenades, crouch down and look at the ground, place your grenade as a booby trap by holding down the right mouse button when prompted. <laughs> When encountering a booby trap as an American soldier, you can disarm them by shooting them or by crawling slowly up to one and disarming it with the left control key when prompted. Smoke grenades are vital to use when advancing on an enemy position in open areas. The commander is supplied with two smoke grenades, but the squad leaders only with one, so use them wisely. It's better to try to get close to the objective and throw your smoke on the objective so the enemy vision is blocked. But don't forget, smoke can be very appealing for the enemy as they know you and your squad are advancing through it and may fire their weapons relentlessly into the cloud of smoke. The binoculars can be a very effective weapon. You can call an artillery as a commander, Mark an artillery spot as a squad leader and notify your teammates of an enemy position. A well-placed artillery or mortar barrage can clear out an objective ready to be taken by your men. To call in an artillery strike, you must use the radio. Look on the map for the location of the radios. Artillery can be a game changer both in your team's favor and against it. If you call artillery directly on an objective or on your team's side of an objective, your own men will have no chance to advance on the enemy and the enemy can reinforce a lot faster. So place an artillery mark behind an objective to prevent the enemy from reinforcing and allowing your men to attack. The best method to decide where to place an artillery strike is to first call in aerial recon and check where the enemy is located in and around the objective. There are four fire support options available to the commander. Mortars are better if the enemy is in a small area objective and there are friendly forces nearby. The artillery strike has bigger shells and a larger damage radius. The artillery strike is also the longest barrage of the artillery options. Rockets are a short but effective barrage, like a heavier version of the mortars. The naval barrage is short but very wide and most effective to clear out enemies over a wider position. Very effective if you want to clear out an objective quick and have your men assault it ASAP. Resupply machine gunners and automatic rifles like the BAR. They will need that extra ammo to keep suppressing the enemy. Be smart on the battlefield. Use your surroundings and go from cover to cover. Use craters, hills, trees, buildings, and smoke to safely advance on or flank the enemy position. Remember the difference between cover and concealment. Cover will prevent bullets from hitting you, concealment will not. Move with your teammates. You have a greater chance of survival when your squad mates are watching your back. But don't stay too close together. Keep good spacing while moving with your squad. If the squad is too tight, one grenade, tank shell, or mortar round will take you all out. Do not attack a machine gun position head on. Use smoke and try to flank the position or ask for sniper or flamethrower support. When engaging an enemy, if possible, do not remain stationary. The enemy has time to perfectly aim his shots. Switch firing positions often. When you can't switch position, keep the enemy guessing by staggering a delay between breaking cover to shoot. The 
bandage system should only be used when in cover. When wounded, be fast and find a safe spot to treat your injuries. You only get two bandages per life, so try not to get shot. Even though it seems like a useful feature, the cover system in Red Orchestra 2 has a big disadvantage. When behind a wall, the top of your helmet can still be seen and also be shot at. When using the cover system at the corner of a wall or doorway, you will also be easily shot through the walls. Use windows and doors effectively. It is better to stand beside a window or door and shoot out the opposite side rather than silhouette yourself within the opening. If you hold your melee button while running, you can charge towards the enemy. In Rising Storm, when playing on the Japanese side, this makes you bonsai charge, but when charging, your character will let out a war cry. The enemy will hear this and become aware of your approach. Did you know you can shoot down the enemy's recon plane? Shoot him down to give the enemy commander less chance to see where your team is heading. Don't stay too close to your tank. It can be good cover, but when that tank blows up or goes in reverse, it will be your worst enemy. Use your ears as well as your eyes. You may hear your enemy coming long before they can see you. Stay moving constantly. This is a great way to keep the enemy guessing where you are. Fire a few shots or kill an enemy and move to another position. This is especially effective for long-range classes like the Sniper. As a Japanese squad leader and commander, you can start a mass bonsai charge. A mass bonsai charge will encourage your fellow Japanese soldiers to charge at the enemies with a temporary boost in stamina. You will receive less suppression, and you can take more damage. This effect multiplies when charging in a group. A bonsai charge also increases suppression toward the enemy team as you are putting fear into their hearts. When engaging infantry, change your tank shells to high explosive with the number 6 key. These shells are excellent to clear out infantry in the open and from buildings. Switch back to armor piercing shells to take on tanks again. In some maps, tanks can shoot smoke rounds as well. Use these to help your team advance on an objective or fire them at an enemy tank to blind him so you can find a better position to take him down. When supporting infantry with a tank, stay behind the infantry advance so they can take down any enemy engineers coming toward you with an anti-tank grenade. This is especially useful in urban areas. When engaging an enemy tank, fire at the weakest points of its armor, the rear and the sides. Memorize where the tanks have their fuel and ammo stored to get an instant hit on your opponent. If you have no chance of getting a good hit on your enemy tank, disable his tracks so he can't move anymore. Shoot at the driver's viewport, or shoot straight at the Panzer IV's cupola to knock out the commander. As a tank commander or driver, try to stay inside the tank as much as possible as you can get shot right out of your tank. Use the side viewports or the commander's cupola instead of turning out. You can adjust the range of your main gun by using the Q and E keys. This will come in handy when shooting armored targets at long range. An anti-tank rifle does not hold the power to punch through armor as much as a tank shell does. So aim for the weak points. Knock out its tracks, transmission, fuel or ammo storage and shoot right in the driver's viewport. If the tank holds an MG gunner wreaking havoc on your team, shoot right at the MG's gunner position to take him out. The anti-tank rifles can also be used to take out infantry. A weapon you don't want shooting at you in the battlefield, as a large caliber round will instantly kill you. As an engineer with anti-tank grenades and satchels, don't engage armor head-on. Instead, wait until the tank has passed and throw an anti-tank grenade right on top of his engine and find cover fast. 
Don't forget to support your tank by destroying tank traps and any obstacles in his way, or he won't be able to advance and support your team. Remember to warm your teammates when you have set a satchel charge, or you will do more harm than good. It is essential to destroy barbed wire on some maps. You don't have to be an engineer to destroy them, as satchel charges can be found at the ammo points. Thank you.